Through George's Eyes by Rachel Rodriguez, illustrated by Julie Pashkis. Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, 1887. George's first memory. She will always remember these colors and the brightness of light, light all around. Soon, Georgia runs and plays games with her brothers and sisters. Her father gives her sweets and plays Irish tunes. Her mother reads stories and cares for the younger children. Everyone works hard on the farm. Georgia roams the prairie. The trees and land keep her company. Pencil and sketch pad comfort her. She discovers she likes to be alone. Seasons melt into seasons on her family's farm. Georgia struggles to show on paper what she sees. At 12, she takes painting lessons. She tells her friend, I'm going to be an artist. But in 1899, only boys become artists. A girl wishing to be one is scandalous. Georgia sees life differently. She paints and paints. Hours pass without notice. She wonders if she can achieve her dream. She walks around a lake and hikes into the woods. Everywhere she looks, shapes hum and sing to her. At art school, brushes and canvas become her language. Paint speaks for her. Watercolor and oil are her words. For a time, Georgia lives in the city. She walks through canyons of concrete. She misses the outdoor world. The sun steals a bite from a skyscraper. The faraway place, open sky and land, calls her. The wideness and wonder of the world amaze Georgia. She wants to share this magic with others. Flowers delight her. She paints them as giants. People stop to stare. Georgia's flowers make them feel like tiny butterflies flitting through the universe of her garden. She moves to Ghost Ranch in New Mexico. Red hills, cliffs, silence, and the far away surround her. In the desert, she discovers extra, extraordinary things, skulls. The bones don't frighten Georgia. To her, they are alive and strong. Their beauty surrounds her. Georgia expresses feelings in her own way. Words work, but for her, the color blue says it better, or red, or a seashell, a pale bone, sunset. The trees and hills whisper their secrets. They are friends, always there for her. A canyon calls her. From the bottom at dusk, she sees a long line of cows above black lace against a dusky sky. She hikes at dawn. She climbs a ridge. The land enchants her. A range of hills is a mile of elephants with white sand at their feet. Sometimes her chow chow tags along. He hops around rocks and chases antelope. They float ahead of her yelping dog. Georgia follows them. She breathes in the dawn a sea of sage covers the plain before a mountain, like waves lapping against a shore. Sometimes she climbs a ladder to her roof. The moon rises above, beneath a giant canvas of inky night and silvery stars, Georgia dreams. Even now, Georgia can show you the world as she sees it. Open your eyes and walk along. See the colors? Hear the shapes singing? No need to hurry. Lean in. Look closer. Closer still. There, the wideness and wonder of the world. All right, so we just got done reading about Georgia O'Keeffe. And one of the things that Georgia O'Keeffe is kind of known for are her large scale flowers. Here's an illustration from the book. Um, here's another, here's a little poster of one. And when you first look at this, the thing that kind of stands out 
is how she's using the space. And I want to remember that when we do our flowers. Because look how large this flower is. If this was our size of our paper, her flower is almost filling up the entire paper. Not entirely, but really close. So think about scale, and that's what you want your flower. You want your flower to be nice and big. Okay, so put these aside. And what we're using today for supplies, we just have white copy paper. I think I might turn mine horizontally. And we always try to use things that we have that are handy. So we could use colored pencils. We could use crayons. If we wanted to use, I don't like to color in with markers, but we could use markers for the outline if we wanted. But I thought it might be fun today to play around with some water-soluble oil pastels. Uh, some of you were lucky enough to get some of these at the beginning of the year. We gave these away. Some of you still probably have these. And I always kind of remind everybody when we first get started, these are super, super soft. These pastels are very delicate. You have to be really careful with them. If you drop one, it might break in half. They look like crayons, but they're a lot softer than crayons. And I've got other colors. Let's look and see what the other colors are too. Aren't those pretty? So I think I like her her reds and oranges that she uses. So I think I'm gonna take some of those out. I'm gonna put them in a place kind of up here at the top of my paper where they can't roll off my table. Yeah, I like that one's kind of pretty too, I might use that. So the flower that we see a lot with George O'Keefe, this white one that I showed you earlier. Some people have moon flowers in their garden. That kind of looks like a moon flower. It's called gypsum weed. And the orange ones that we see a lot, like on the cover of the book, those look like poppies to me. So I'm gonna do kind of a poppy shape. And again, I'm using these water-soluble oil pastels. They're really soft, so I don't need to press very hard. Um, and I'm not gonna worry so much about the green in the beginning, but I am going to, I'm gonna kinda look at this. And I like how these leaves, or the petals rather, are really big and loose. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with a big petal. I'm using this red. Okay. And I can just come back and kind of echo some of these lines. Okay. And let's come in with some other colors. And again, I'm just going to very gently draw in some color because these are really soft. If I push down very hard, I could even actually break the pastel, but also I just don't need it to. I don't need to do it very hard. So I'm just kind of coming back around where I did my outline. And this says red orange. The first one says red. And this one's just plain orange, so that's kind of fun to mix this in around it. I'm going to show you a trick here in a second. Maybe it's not a trick, but maybe you didn't know it. Let's see. So this is kind of fun just to kind of make some swirly shapes. And I have the orange. I'm going to come back in and just do some soft coloring in. It's very relaxing. And you don't need to worry about filling in all of the white because of the what I'm going to show you here in a second. Just kind of gently coming in. Okay, this is the part that's really cool. So water soluble means that these pastels actually mix with water. They're not water resistant. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. I'm gonna come in with some a little water, something a little damp, and it's gonna make all these colors kind of dissolve, kind of smear together. So this is kind of fun. This is a watercolor brush. It's portable. It actually has it comes with a little lid. And you, I don't know if you can see, but I have taken off this lid and I filled it about halfway up with water. This is fun for people if you're um, taking, want, you know, transportable art supplies. You could bring it empty and then fill it up when you get somewhere with like water from your, I don't know that that's supposed to happen, but. <laughs> 
Okay, so what happens if I want my brush to be wet, instead of having to have a little pan or something I dip into, all I do is squeeze it a little bit and it's the water comes out and now look what happens. How fun is that? I can do it on the outline too if I want. Or if I want to keep the outline a little bit crisper. If you didn't have this, guess what else you could use? You could just use a Q-tip. Q-tips do the same thing. All right. If I feel like I want more color, this is what's really cool about these. You can use them wet or dry. So I can come in, even though now my paper is wet, I can come in and add more of the orange if I want. I remember I'm not pushing down very hard. I'm just really lightly. When we were giving these away in our kits a few months ago, we had a lot of people asking where you can get these, and I have not found these anywhere locally anymore. They used to have them when we had a staples, but now you need to order them online. They're about $8, which seems kind of expensive, but if you're careful with them, they will last for a long time. Look how fun this is. I can come back in and show you with a Q-tip, too. The Q-tip, obviously, is dry, so you would want to have another little water source for that. And I'm just rubbing my brush around just to get that all kind of blended in. And if I see little places where I want more color, you also can let this dry and come back and keep playing with it. Okay, same thing over here. Kind of feels like magic. It's very cool. The little portable watercolor brush, those you can get at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Just go to the section where they have paint brushes. I don't recommend trying to travel with them filled up because they do leak. So I think it's better if you're taking it with you, have it empty and then fill it up when you get to where you're going. But that would be like the idea that if you wanted to make art outside, if you took your supplies with you and you were out in a park or something. All right, so we're just gonna keep going. This kind of reminds me of chalk for some reason. This makes me think it'd be fun to go do a giant flower on the sidewalk with some chalk art. So the cool thing about having the water inside the brush is you don't have to keep dipping. Now, if I was using a lot of different colors, like these are all kind of similar colors, so I'm not worried about it, but if I was going to do something where I was going from orange to black, I would want to make sure my, I would want to clean this off, because you can see how there's orange on my brush. And you could do that with just with a paper towel. Again, you can kind of eyeball it. There's some parts that you want some more color. And like I said, you can let it dry, come back and say, oh, you know, I wanted more orange up there. And because these are pastels, these water soluble pastels, they're not chalky, they're not dusty, but they kind of do what they're going to do really quickly. So when I say let it dry, I don't mean like come back in half an hour. I mean just like you can kind of turn over and see how damp my paper is. But you want it uh, just enough so that your paper has dried off. Maybe 10 or 15 minutes you could come back and 
messing around with it some more. You don't want your paper to get too wet because then it gets real wrinkly. And this is this is just copy paper. It's not very heavy. Okay, that was kind of my area that I'm thinking would be fun to have the center of my flower. And I'm going to do that. Again, I kind of like that idea that it's a poppy. The black. And now this black one, I'm going to make it pretty solid. I'm not going to worry about coming in with the brush. But sometimes with the poppies, it looks like those little seeds are kind of loose. I'm going to make some little dots like the seeds are coming out. All right, so there I have my giant flower. I could keep going. I could come back with greens if I wanted and show where the stem comes down. You just keep going until you're happy with how it looks. When you think it's finished, it probably is. And again, don't forget, with art, we always want to sign our name down in the bottom right-hand corner. And good luck with your giant Georgia O'Keeffe flowers.